Hello guys, this is another tutorial about JFlab. The first one was about the basics of JFlab, and we had another one that was about working with Turing machines. And in this one, we will focus on the Turing machines running modes, or in other words, different modes that we can run Turing machines in JFlab. So let's get started. Let's see what is the objective. In JFlab, we can run Turing machines into different modes. What are they and what is the difference? So far, we ran Turing machines for just accepting and rejecting strings, but we know that we can do more with Turing machines. For example, we can simulate functions. If so, then we would need to know how JFlab shows the output. To understand this tutorial, we would need some knowledge about the Turing machines, we need the concept of the transducer, and also we will be using JFlab 7.1. Okay, let's first introduce different modes that we can run Turing machines by using JFlab. JFlab can run Turing machines in two modes. Regular mode that we can access it from here, the menu input, multiple run, I will show you shortly, and also transducer mode, right? Okay, so let me bring up my JFlab first. We want to test this simple Turing machines. So as you see here, we have multiple run, multiple run in transducer. Both of them are accessible from the input. Okay, now let's focus on each one. In the regular mode, multiple run, JFlab shows the input and result columns. And in result column, we can see the accept or reject, something like this. And in the multiple run transducer mode, not only we have input and the result, but also we have output as well, like this. So you see this output here. But really, what is this output? This is something that I will be explaining in the next section. In this section, we want to focus on what the JFlab's output is. Okay, we know that the output is located on the Turing machine's tape. But what part exactly of the tape should be considered as the output? Let's assume that Turing machine halts in an accepting state. Yeah, I am emphasizing on this one because if the Turing machine does not halt in an accepting state it does not show you the output so the Turing machine halts in an accepting state and the tape contents looks like this and also the position of the cursor right then we define the output from where the cursor is pointing it means from here to the right until the first blank, right? So the output of the Turing machine will be defined like this. And for this particular example, the output will be 1011. So one more time, from where the cursor is pointing to the right until the first blank. All right. To complete our understanding about the output, let me give you two examples. One analysis and one design. So this is a simple Turing machine. We want to input the A as the input string and analyze what would happen. Okay, let me create a tape like this. Okay, when we run the machine, the cursor is pointing to the A. Now, what would happen here? 
it says that if it is A, don't change it, go to the right. So this guy will go here. If it is blank, change it to X, go to the left. All right, it is blank, change it to X and go to the left. Okay, the cursor is pointing to the A. Now the question is, what is the output? Yeah, based on our definition in the previous slide, it will be from here until here, the first blank to the right. So the output will be AX. Yeah, now let me show it from here. So we go to multiple run and this is A and we run the input. And as you see, the output is showing as AX. Okay. And one another thing I want to show you here is if the machine does not stop in an accepting state, yeah, I, I am going to intentionally make this as a regular state and repeat the run again. And as you see, it doesn't show the output. So machine should stop in an accepting state. Otherwise, it does not show the output. Okay, now let me solve a design example. We have two unary numbers and they are separated by a zero. And we want to design a Turing machine that computes X plus Y. So in fact, here are some examples. If this is the X and this is the Y, then the output should look like this. So we have two here and three here. The output should be five, right? Okay, let me start designing it from the scratch, okay? So it's a good idea to always check the preferences before starting. So Turing machine, it should be accept by finite state and also allow stay for tape head on transition that will give us the ability to use the stay option. And that's a good idea that we enable that as well. So our preferences is good. Now we start designing. Okay, so what is the strategy? Okay, so this is the input and I want to reach to this guy. One strategy would be we shift all of these guys here, something like that. Or another one would be we shift these ones from here to here. Uh, of course, both of them are very stupid. Right? So the easiest one is, so what is the difference between this tape and this tape? Uh, we just need to change this zero to one, right? But now, now we have one, one more. So probably it's better uh, we change this to the blank, right? Here is the summary of what I said. So first I check it is one and then I make it blank and then go to the right to find this zero. I change it to one and then return back. Just note that the location of the cursor is very important. You need to return it back and to put it on the beginning of this string. Otherwise it does not show you the correct output. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, first thing is we read if it is one, then change it to blank and go to the right. And after that, I need to bypass all of the ones to reach to this zero guy. So I would need a loop here. If it is one, don't change it go to the right. After this loop, I need to change whether there is a zero or not. If it is zero, change it to one and go to the 
left and then I need to bypass all of the ones and go to the left it is one don't change it go to the left again and then we are something like we are here now all right now we need to check whether it is blank and then go to the right and the cursor will be on the right place go here if it is blank don't change it go to the right I just need to make this guy as a final state now let's test our program so it can be for example one we need to separate them uh, with the zero one zero one and let's say one zero one one we should get three one one zero one 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 we should get five and so forth right yeah so the code is working fine and here are the references that we use to prepare this tutorial see you guys in the next video